Egypt. When most people hear that word, they think na 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 na, or walk like an Egyptian, walk like an Egyptian. Why do they think that? Because they're uneducated in Egyptian culture. <sighs> Come with me today as we explore. <laughs> Let's get something straight. The Egyptians had thousands of gods. Some of the most important were Thoth. Thoth gave the Egyptians the gift of hieroglyphs. Ugh. Bastet. Bastet was a protective goddess and the daughter of Ra. Amun. Amun was a very powerful god. He combined with Ra to become Amun Ra. Horus. Horus was the god of the sky and king of earth. Well, I'll have to tell you myself. I'm Anubis, god of embalming the dead. Huh? Hi, I'd like to order a pizza. Oh, this is Osiris, and, god yeah, of the... Put, what? I don't want anchovies. <laughs> Like, like, uh. Uh. That was Osiris, god of the dead and cell phones. Come on. Geb, this is Geb, god of the earth and brother to Nut, the sky goddess. Bye, Geb. Oh! Uh. Oh, this is the almighty sun god, Ra. The Egyptians believed he was swallowed each night by the sky goddess Nut. <coughs> and was reborn every morning. <coughs> ah! Ugh, well, those gods are fun to have around. Oh, this happens all the time, don't worry. Um, when someone in ancient Egypt died, their ka, or spirit, would make... Ah! Ah! A long and dangerous journey to a place of judgment where they ah uh, uh um excuse me would be asked questions by many gods ah uh, don't even think about it then their heart would be weighed against Maat's feather of truth if they answered honestly their heart would be either equal to or lighter than the feather but if the person did not answer Honestly, their heart would sink with sin, and a crocodile-headed lion with the back end of a hippo named Amut would eat the dead person's heart, and they would die, uh, ahem, die a second death. Thus, if you led a life free from sin, you would pass into the next life, a life in a kingdom ruled by Osiris. Now, if you were going to do all this, then you'd need a brrr body, right? That's why the Egyptians made mummies. How they made them? Well, watch the story of an ancient Egyptian named Ajima. There once was a boy named Ajima. He grew up, got married, got rich, and died. Only 5% of ancient Egyptian people were mummified. They were the wealthy ones, and Ajima was very rich. Come on. His wife and child took him to some priests, paid them, mourned, and left. To mummify, you first need to de remove what decays the fastest, and that would be the inner organs. disrespectful to cut into another person's body, so to show the gods they were not happy with this being done, they would throw rocks at the unlucky person who had to do it. Then someone had to reach inside and pull out all the inner organs except for the heart, which was left because it was considered the center of intelligence. The brain was pulled out with a hook and thrown away. Next, they covered the organs and body with natron, a type of salt. 
which would dry the body out. And after 40 days, you have a very dried out body. They put the organs in canopic jars. Imitzi, the human-headed god, held the liver. Hapi, the baboon-headed god, held the lungs. Canopic jars had god's heads on them. Damutef, the jackal-headed god, held the stomach. And Kwebinsef, the falcon-headed god, held the intestines. Then they wrapped up Ajima in linen strips, some of which had spells and prayers written on them. Once they finished each layer, they painted on resin. Between layers, they put scarabs and amulets that would spiritually protect the body. Then they put a cloth with Osiris painted on the front over the whole thing. Then came the coffin, which had a portrait of Ajima painted on it. The opening of the mouth ceremony allowed the dead person to eat and drink again. <laughs> then they then Ajima was put in a mastaba along with his canopic jars. Pharaohs were put in pyramids. Well, I guess that's it. Goodbye. <laughs>